So, a couple of years ago, one of my teachers asked the class, "What are you most proud of?" Other students raised their hands and started, "I got a full point in my math exam, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud that my football team won that last match. It was my turn, and I had no idea." But that question got me into thinking. I was the girl who would read a book at the corner of the classroom, go back home to play video games, and finish the homework at the last minute. And this is the story of how that girl found the answer of this question: What am I most proud of? I grew up watching documentaries about science and, and technology, and I really liked science fiction movies. So I was already interested in those topics, and I saw a video in 2015, the first landing of Falcon 9. A rocket manufactured by SpaceX. I have always liked seeing liftoff videos of rockets, thanks to science fictions. But it was the first time I saw a rocket land, and I found that landing really interesting. It was just like a glance to the future. Naturally, I wanted to learn more about rocket science. But back in 2015, we did not have a space agency in Turkey, which meant I had no example around me to look up to. We didn't learn much about space in school either. Other than the fact that the Earth is round, it has a satellite called Moon, and they turn around the Sun, and that was pretty much it. So, what would a 15-year-old girl do? I decided to start my own space program, not a national agency or a private company, but a call to action for people in charge. I wanted to show that space exploration is something that young people care about, and at the end of the day, I couldn't see a reason why this someone wouldn't be a high schooler girl. I started by designing a tube satellite for a national science fair, just like space exploration began with the launch of Sputnik 1, the first satellite on orbit. It was designed to decrease the number of space debris on orbit, which are human-made objects that are no longer useful. So the purpose of the project was to create a thrust power on the debris by using heat difference a laser will provide, and direct the debris back to lower levels of orbit, where it's easier to burn down and disappear. It wasn't as successful as I imagined. Turns out, putting lasers to orbit requires a massive amount of energy that a small cubesat like I was designing can't produce. And honestly, I was quite disappointed with it. But even though the project didn't work well as I hoped, I did meet with a fantastic group of high school students who were designing a Mars rover in order to compete in a university competition. Meet with Anka Spacek. We met and talked about the future of the group, and we decided to work together. For one year, we worked on finding solutions to the problems that real rovers face on Mars. For example, around that time, curious rovers' tires were breaking down. And we tried to come up with an innovative tire idea that would not experience the same. I was responsible with computer-aided design part, which simply means driving the mechanical parts of the rover on computer. And I was really enjoying the time I spent working on that project. It was giving me such a stress that makes you feel alive and excited to see the future. It was time for step two: landing man to the moon, or in our case, landing to Mars. We had such a hard time finding sponsors. We got many rejections, but it did not shatter us because we were too busy moving forward and think about the next opportunity. But we were too idealistic, and we couldn't finish everything on time. But for me, it was still a huge success because it brought me one step further into the realization of my interests. As I started to discover what I enjoyed to do, I began to go to conferences and events, and I actually worked on other projects. And I learned a lot about engineering, entrepreneurship, project management, and of course, space science. But I had to leave all that fun stuff behind as the university exams approached. Naturally, it was a really stressful period of time for me. But I wrote a paragraph one day about my dreams, why I wanted to study aerospace engineering. And how I want to help my country to make a progress in terms of space industry. I sent it to a non-profit organization involved in public outreach and promotion of STEM education, without really hoping for anything. And I was really excited to actually get a reply. Not only that, but I was chosen as one of the 24 under 24 leaders and innovators in space by the Mars Generation. It made me think. I was not enjoying doing nothing but solving test questions all day, so I had to make a choice, and my choice was following my dreams. So, 
I grabbed the first thing nearby, which was my phone, and think, how can I use it to reach my goals? So I started a social media platform for students who loved space and science to help, to help them share interests and create a collaboration space. In addition to that, I started an aerospace society in my high school, and we organized workshops and talks together. We tried to share what we know with each other and with people around us, and together we learned more each day. Soon, I realized to surround myself with people who share the same passion and purpose was really beneficial to shape my vision and personality. Because one of the critical needs of a space organization is to have good engineers and scientists around. Next, I shared this story with Microsoft Turkey. They were impressed with my public outreach attempts, and I was chosen as future technology star by them. And once again, I was really honored to be able to make my, make my voice heard. It also showed me maybe there weren't many who were willing to sponsor a Mars rover or invest in a group of students who were trying to, trying to discover space on their own, since school curriculum did not really include it. But there were still some who believed us. You may ask, why are you so obsessed with it? Space exploration is the greatest adventure that humanity ever could embark upon. It's inspiring, exciting, and beautiful at the same time. And when you look at Earth from space, there are no borderlines between countries. Nothing separating us. It helps you to zoom out and see how tiny actually you are, how insignificant problems we face are. Explore what you want. Say you like science, explore science. If you like sports, explore sports. You could read books about it, watch documentaries, go to events nearby, talk to experts, share your interests on social media, etc. There doesn't have to be a philosophical meaning behind it. Sometimes you just like something without searching for a deeper reason. The simple action of exploring what interested me changed how I live. I became a person who is not scared to take risks, who challenges herself, and who is more persistent with her goals. And I know what I'm proud of. I'm proud that I found my own passion. Today, as I studied the major I dreamt for the last four years, I work on creating video game, video game content for children to spark their interest in STEM and space. And I work harder each day to help the humanity to reach the stars one day. There are so many young people like myself in this room right now. And deep inside, each one of us has a passion and a purpose just like that. But it's powerless when it stays inside of you. So check your pockets right now. Maybe there is your phone, some money, or maybe a notebook. Think how you can use it to reach your goals, how it can help you to realize your passions. When you find it, hold it closer and never leave. Think about it, dream about it, and take it to the action. Each one of us has the potential to change our own future. Thank you.